Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Steph. Um, from France, I've been in China about 11 years. Um, and I've started this venture, GAMS, uh, about five, a bit more than five years ago now. What we do is we provide a, a data platform for building environment and sustainability. So essentially, we, we're bridging, uh, we're a bit at the center between clean tech, green tech, IoT, uh, prop tech. It's a bit hard to figure out exactly what um, Monica defines us, but that's, that's a bit what, what we are. Uh, today, I will introduce very quickly my business. I don't think that's the most important part. I think what is interesting to talk about is uh, clean tech and entrepreneurship and the challenges in clean tech or green tech or whatever uh, with entrepreneurship. Um, so we, we essentially connect a building uh, mm -hmm. to a data platform, and then we output reports, alerts, knowledge, uh, better understanding of what's happening, insights, um, with all the data that we gather. All, uh, words I don't use, blockchain, machine learning, all that bullshit. Usually it's just it's buzzwords that don't mean much. Uh, so we don't do any of that stuff. We just do pure tech that actually provides value to our customers. Um, so helping b people that manage buildings better operate their buildings, better understand what hap what's happening in there and create healthy environments. Um, the World uh, Economic Forum um, research shows that about 39% of the greenhouse emission on the planet are due to commercial buildings, um, with about 11% from construction, and then 28% on operation. So if we can impact operation of buildings and make them work better, we do impact uh, green, greenhouse emission on the planet. Um, so that's a bit the lofty goal of the, of the, of the business. Um, yeah, so, you know, displays, um, that's the kind of stuff that customers really like. Our platform is extremely flexible in the way you can consume the data. Um, there's a lot of very complex intricacies in the back end, uh, but nobody really cares about this. Uh, that's what makes me roll, but the reality, it's a lot about how the data is presented, how it looks. We can connect all sorts of different monitors, uh, create a lot of metrics. So we receive data, we process the data, and we create a trove of knowledge on top of just pure data from monitors. When we cross data or look at patterns or look at patterns with the type of building, etc., we can really extract way more knowledge about what's going on in the building and try to based on that knowledge, try to extract action. Um, this is usually the presentation I do to customers. I didn't really cut it. I didn't realize I have to do a formal presentation. I was just coming to talk. Um, yeah, that's the kind of visualization. These, these type of tools might be very common for you, depending on your industry. But in the building industry, operation industry, um, it's definitely they're not there at all. They still use very, very dated protocols, very, very dated type of software. And in China especially, there's a mindset that is quite dated as well. They're not there in terms of operation of buildings. You've all lived it through you know, bad windows in your house that just don't retain heat. Um, the AC that get cuts off at 6 o'clock, but you're still working, and the temperature raises 8 to 10 degrees in 30 minutes. That kind of stuff is not very smart. But that's the way here they look at very short-term gain. Um, so cutting the energy in the building at 6 o'clock is a very easy way to demonstrate that you're saving money. But in the long run, for the building operation, it's actually very bad practices. Um, so we're creating all those different visualizations to try to prove points on the environment inside buildings and bring knowledge in a way that is a bit more understandable and digestible rather than very theoretical. Uh, building operations, um, alerts, and, and weekly reports, and other uh, such things. Obviously, uh, we also uh, push a lot for green certifications. Even if we're not really a consultancy business, um, that's something that we, uh, we have to be compatible with because some of our customers want to have those uh, different uh, certifications. Uh, the principle of the platform is that we're an open platform. 
a lot of platform out there in IoT or World Garden, like uh, Apple products. Uh, we accept a lot of different protocols, a lot of different brands. We're really just providing the data component there. Um, at the moment, I think we have about 20 different air quality monitors, a dozen uh, um, energy and water monitors, and then all the different standard building protocols that we can also bridge to the IoT world. Um, you would be surprised, I mean, if anybody is working in technology, the state of buildings today is just, it's still a lot in the 70s, 80s uh, in terms of tech. And uh, people, as soon as they step out of the building, they could completely cut from operation, data, everything. Um, and that's uh, one of the last thing we developed with, uh, with a group here in Shanghai, uh, AVI, which is um, a, an index that allows us to uh, assess the risk of infection in a building. Uh, obviously, in COVID times, it's uh, quite uh, interesting, but it's a generic viral infection risk. Um, flu is also a, a big strain on the economy. Uh, people were getting sick, going back home, getting their family sick. Uh, they caught it in the office or the kids caught it at school. And then that impacts a lot of different people. Um, so this index is quite interesting. This is something we bootstrapped a few months ago. Uh, we've got quite a lot of interest in the US and in Europe, but it's still sort of nascent. We're trying to figure out how to market it. Um, this is a screen that goes with it, a bit bold and... Uh, and uh, trying to provide information. Yeah, that's it, really. Um, poop, 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 case studies, nobody cares. Uh, clients, um, you know, we all have that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's it, really. Uh, but I think what is more interesting in terms of, uh, of clean tech and uh, prop tech is uh, the challenges that we, um, that we, yeah, I know, I know, but I need to, okay, I need to be in the frame of the, <laughs> Um, the challenges that are uh, created by clean tech and green tech, especially in China, where the, the mindset are still quite locked into very short-term thinking, in, especially in terms of buildings. Build quickly, build cheap, sell the building, and then when you operate, try to operate it as, at the minimum cost possible. Um, I don't know where you guys work, but even gray day buildings in Shanghai, things like IAPM, you know, Kerry Center, Shanghai Tower, are actually not great in terms of operations, and they're not very great in terms of environment either. Um, I can't really name names, but we've done some measurements for customers, tenants, in their spaces where they pay prime rent, and PM 2.5 values are horrible, CO2 is horrible, and you're really not creating uh, the right environment for people to be the most productive and the uh, most healthy. Um, so that, that's one of the big challenges. This is changing though. Uh, the main problem here is the, um, the investment money for real estate. Um, it's a lot of uh, government owned companies that just want to offload the, the buildings as soon as they are built. And then are looking at when they own the building, they're looking at the investment at five, 10 years. Um, but new, um, financial regulations are actually opening the market for insurance money and probably private funds later um, in the next few years. Um, so we're gonna start seeing a market that is a bit more like North America where funds come in and they look at, you know, uh, retirement funds that look at an horizon of uh, 50 to 100 years. Um, so their, their, their goals for operations of a building are very, very different. Um, there's also a problem, at least for me personally as a business, um, between uh, environment and startup. Um, there's a big problem in recruitment and finding talents, um, finding technical talents, or even just uh, simply business development, marketing, uh, people that are ready to go in a startup that is entirely bootstrapped. Uh, today my business is profitable, but I've not accepted you know, millions of dollars from investors. So I can't really give massive packages. There's, there's a big prospect, but I need people to stay, you know, three, four, five years until we really grow 
and uh, and uh, at that point there will be really a reward but a lot of people here just want the money right now there's a lot of family pressure just society pressure to be in at a certain salary wait a year and a half change job get a kick in the salary and do that four or five times uh, get the nice title and then uh, and then stay there um, so that that's quite challenging um, and then overall just uh, the status of um, environment in China. Uh, the government is putting a lot of pressure for sure. Um, I'm not necessarily in agreement with everything uh, the CCP does or says, but definitely in environment, they are clearly having an action plan and they're pushing really hard. Now the problem is how it's trickling down to local governments and how it's implemented. The CCP is providing goals, but not really plans. And that's the main issue still um, a lot of people here um, are going to shed the easy parts and then for the hard parts that are really the, the meat and, the, and, and the, the big slice of the impact on the environment, it's going to take way more time because if we go back to my first point, it's the lack of talent and the lack of you know, planning, short term vision is not, is not helping with making those big plans for 5-10 years. How do you operate a building better? It takes people and processes to get performance, right? So if your people and your processes are not in place, and if the incentive is not coming from the top, then those buildings are not going to get better operated. At the moment, we're getting way more success for our product in uh, the rest of Asia, uh, the North American continent, Europe, and in China, we, we're still growing, but not as fast as we're growing outside. Um, so clearly that shows, and it's very, really a shame because the potential here is way bigger. But unfortunately, it's just a, a mindset that is not yet there to, to actually bring the change. Um, I had a very interesting discussion yesterday from, uh, with the, um, a guy from BOMA. BOMA is a building owner association. It's the biggest in the world. And, and that guy's vision is from building owner's side. But he's spent his whole career in Canada He's, uh, he's a Chinese-born uh, 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 Canadian, I guess. Uh, and, uh, but came retired and came to China to help Boma. And his, uh, his vision is very interesting because he, he's had his whole career as a professional in the real estate uh, uh, domain in, in the North American continent and came here and sort of got thrown back in the 70s or 60s in the US. Uh, so he's ad advocating a lot on those things, but we agreed on the big difficulties and hurdles um, that it presents. I think that's it really for me. Um, that's 13 minutes. Um, yeah, it, it is challenging. It's, it's very, um, for me, it's, it's a passion project. Um, my brother uh, always uh, pushes me. I now share an office with him, which is probably a terrible idea. Uh, he pushes me to just uh, drop that project and go work for Facebook and, and make you know, shitloads of money. Uh, but at the same time, what would I do at Facebook that makes me passionate? I'm not sure. Um, this is for me a passion project. I'm, I really believe in what we're doing. I believe we're bringing a whole segment of an industry that has an, an enormous impact on, on the environment into the 21st century. Uh, through data and tools that help them better operate. Um, so my mind, I'm doing, you know, um, I have a, an impact activity that also allows me to make money, which is kind of a sweet spot for me.